All right, finally, does the God hypothesis have good explanatory scope? And remember, that's where if the God hypothesis is true, it would explain some data, maybe, but it doesn't fit very well with lots of other data. So I'll give just one example of how the God hypothesis does not have good explanatory scope. Uh, let's say the design argument, the fine tuning of the universe, or the bacterial flagellar motor. If the God hypothesis was true, then maybe an intelligent, loving, perfectly powerful God uh, would be a good explanation for why there's a bacterial flagellar motor or a human eye or some other complex functional thing. Maybe, but then let's look at the other data. There's a lot of evil, horrifying design in the world. There's a lot of incompetent design in the world. We are trying very hard to design better human beings than evolution gave us. There's also tons and tons of totally useless design in the universe. Uh, the, vast amount, the vast majority of matter that's in the universe that we know of is in black holes, and it's completely useless. This, is a very, this data doesn't fit at all with the idea of a perfectly good, perfectly uh, knowledgeable, and perfectly powerful being. So again, the God hypothesis has poor explanatory scope. It would explain little bits and pieces of the data if it were true, but it doesn't fit with the vast majority of the data that's out there. So this is why the God hypothesis is not a good explanation for things. It has none of the qualities that philosophers and scientists look for in a good explanation. And in fact, it has many of the qualities of what we know to be really, really bad explanations from pseudoscience and superstition. It's very similar to a lot of those types of explanations. And what, so how do you defeat religious arguments in one easy step? Here's how you do it. You point out the part of the argument that purports to offer God as a best explanation for something, for intelligent design, for the fine tuning of the universe, for uh, the existence of moral facts, uh, for the origins of the universe. You pick out that part of the argument that purports to offer God as the best explanation for something, and you ask, how is God the best explanation for that? Explain to me how poof magic can be a best explanation for that. I need to know how God could be a best explanation for that. And when you ask that question, I think what you'll find is that what's being offered is not really an argument to the best explanation. This is a good old-fashioned argument from ignorance. This is, wow, what was that flash in the sky? It's lightning. How does that happen? We have no idea. It must be Zeus. Or, oh, wow, that's bacterial flagellar motor. We have no idea how that happens. It must be Yahweh. These are arguments from ignorance. When you say we have no idea, you don't then say it must be anything. You say, we have no idea, period. You know, that's where, the, that's where it stops until you have some data. So when you ask people to explain how is poof magic the best explanation for this, then it becomes clear that actually what's happening is it's an argument from ignorance and it's being dressed up in this philosophically acceptable language of best explanation. So, how do you defeat religious arguments in one easy step? You pick out the part of the argument that offers God as a best explanation, and you ask, how is magic a good explanation for that? That's it.